other thing, too, is I want to make this one last point, is that they missed an opportunity because a, a, a president controls the platform. I remember in 1972 at the Miami Convention, Richard Nixon controlled the, the uh, convention from beginning to end, including the platform. And, and, the, and the, believe it or not, in the convention hall, there were giant murals of, of Leonid Brezhnev and Mao Zedong. At a Republican con convention, there were of these two communist leaders, but that was Nixon's policy at the time. Uh, and, and that Trump could have used Platform Week to promote his own policies and put them down on paper. There's some of them that uh, conservatives can agree with that are they're good, and he could have used them to emphasize his accomplishments uh, or claim his accomplishments of the last four years. So I just consider it a missed opportunity to advance whatever it is he advanced, but also it's a missed opportunity where the party is going to stand uh, in next January or four years hence. Well, and Caddy K, what concerns me the most uh, of, of many things that concerns me is I, I, I really think because of demographic changes in this country, I think that the Democratic Party is going to win Texas moving forward and the Democratic Party is going to be in power for the next 30, 40 years. And what concerns me is uh, that whoever is president, Republican or Democrat, uh, they are going to use uh, all of Trump's actions as precedent. So whether it's a Republican or an independent or a Democrat, they will be using all the precedents of, of the Trump presidency. Uh, and again, it, it, is, it is a presidency that is devoid of a platform and, it, and a presidency devoid of traditional uh, policies. You know, we used to support balanced budgets, and, you know, small government. Uh, we are anti-Russia, anti-authoritarianism, pro-democracy, pro-freedom. We were the party that supported the freeing of the slaves. We were the party that supported the tearing down of walls. Um, none of that was spoken about last night uh, because Donald Trump only wanted people speaking about him and building these imaginary straw men that Trump could then later knock down. Yeah, I mean, uh, the argument of last night was there's a culture war and you choose which side of it you're on. You're either with Donald Trump or you're with everybody else. And that's a kind of common theme of populism, right? Whether it's in Hungary or whether it's in Poland, it's either you're with me or you're de facto against me and everyone who's against me um, is a threat and is bad. Uh, and, the, and the policies and the principles don't really matter so much. I, I wanted to ask Carly something because you had some very sage advice there to Democrats if they want to try and win over people who voted for Trump back in 2016. But I, I guess the question for Democrats would be, there is a strand of nativism in what we heard last night. And there are dog whistles about race in when they went with these, you know, iterations about suburbs and suburbs being destroyed. Would your advice to the Democratic leadership be just ignore all of that? Don't take that on? Um, in which case the base of the Democratic Party is going to accuse you of pandering and ignoring something that's very real or, or, or what would you, how would you suggest they handle that? Ignore the nativism that's in the Trumpian party at the moment? No, you can't ignore it. It's appalling and I haven't ignored it, uh, nor should they ignore it. It's appalling. It's real. When the president's sons are holding up QAnon as a legitimate political movement. I mean, it's appalling. And there are people in Trump's base who are without a doubt racists, white supremacists, and nativists. It is critically important to call out Donald Trump as a danger to the soul of America. I believe that. It's why I will vote for Biden. It's critically important to call out his threat to constitutional norms and precedents. It's critically important to call out how he is dividing this nation along every conceivable line. And it's critically important to call out that character matters, as does leadership. And he has neither. At the same time, I think it's very, and by the way, I think the Democrats did a really good job of that last week, and they must do that to galvanize their base. But as we know, the Democrats need to get their base out to vote, and they also need to convince people who voted once for Obama and once for Trump to come back to the Democrat Party. And so to do that, I, my advice would simply be, do not lump everyone who voted for Trump into the category 
of the worst of Trump's base. See voters, see citizens as individuals and understand that the themes that Trump plays on of you can't trust the federal government, you can't trust the media, you can't trust politicians, they're all crooks. Understand those themes have been around and alive and well in America for a very long time. And there is reason for people to believe that sometimes you can't trust the media or the federal government or politicians. All right, Carly Fiorina and Craig Shirley, thank you both. Greatly appreciate you being on. And coming up next, a new behind the scenes account of the president's fateful call to Ukraine's president and what it says about American democracy. Keep it here on Morning Joe. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.